Hi everybody, welcome back. So that was some beautiful art and some beautiful video. And uh, Pat is from uh, uh, Canada, and Omar is really from all over the world. Just an amazing musician, Omar Akram and Pat Peace, and the art project. And you know, again, join us because it's better for the healing, better for the acupuncture, and really each of us is better to be part of something that's trying to heal the heart, trying to heal the planet. So everyone is welcome. No skill level required. Everyone is welcome. And the extraordinary piece you're seeing in between Anelia and I is something Anelia did for the art project. It's called Bridging Heaven and Earth. And why don't you talk about, you know, you manifesting it and you being you and all that. Well, this, um, when I was asked to make the piece, um, I concentrated on the name. And then I had the visuals come in, but if they were multidimensional, so it actually took about six months for me to be able to put it on a two-dimensional <laughs> piece of canvas. And originally, because I majored in photography at university, I thought of a photography piece, you know, I could do a collage or something. And I started working on that at first, and then it kept getting a no, a no, <laughs> it has to be something like physical, something that I touch and, you know, create both with energy and bring something else in with it, right? It's not just about the image, it's about the energy that the piece has. So I worked on that and uh, putting the, trying to translate the multidimensional image into one that was something that was, could be put into a canvas. And basically what came through was that um, us as a human species um, have the power, have the ability to create heaven on earth. Actually, it's the only way to do it. That's what came through. It's our intention as a collective, the human collective, to join with earth, who is already there, and manifest that new reality. Um, and as we have the intention, as more and more people wake up around the planet, and more and more teachers come out to lead and to teach and to show how to raise the level of vibration of the planet, it just becomes more and more real. And um, even though sometimes we look around and think, we're not getting anywhere. But if you think about it, there has never been on, in history, or at least the, the one that we were taught, uh, so many awake people, so many teachers, there hasn't been. So, yeah, the, it's been a joy to create it. And um, it was a joy to have it in my home, <laughs> you know, well, after it was finished. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, it's certainly a joy to have it here, for <laughs> sure. And so I said at the opening that from early on, you knew you had a certain, almost particular mission. Right. So why don't you talk about that and what it was like growing up with that kind of knowing and, and when it became clear to you and how you manifested through it and learned. And yeah. Well, like everybody else, I've had a human experience in a lifetime, this lifetime. But it's, it's different to most in that I came in from not being into being just before I was born or my body was born. And the physical body was asked whether it would be okay to stay because it was um, booked to leave, really. It was, it was very sick and it was going to die. And um, asked whether it would stick around and house me, you know. And uh, the body was reluctant at first because it was tired. It had done its evolutionary process and wanted to move on. But then out of a sense of duty, it stayed. And um, then it was fixed enough for me to live on the planet and it was also made lighter, uh, less dense, so that I could get into it. And um, so, but I knew even from an early age that uh, I have, I, I used to have full recall, but now it's kind of a lot of it, I have lost it. But I used to have full consciousness that there was a very specific thing that I had to do. And it was to um, <coughs> raise the level of vibration of the planet. But at the time, I didn't know that vocabulary. I didn't know how to express it. I didn't know what it was, I thought to make everybody happy or, you know, to take suffering away from everybody on the planet, you know, things like that would come Those through. Those aren't bad starts, for sure. <laughs> right. You know, for yeah. anybody at any time. Yeah. And uh, as a child, I started investigating and, you know, I would talk to people and adults and nobody knew what the hell I was talking about. I didn't grow up in a very religious or spiritual household. And then um, my grandmother kind of copped on a little bit <laughs> and she gave me some books on saints. You know? And um, I started reading them and thought, oh, taking, but it, it just didn't, it didn't work out, you know, I didn't become a saint. <laughs> so, but it was one of those childhood things, you know, those, that's what was going through my mind and everything. Um, and then I studied Buddhism, I studied uh, 
uh, different religions and different philosophies, healing methods and stuff, uh, just reading and meeting people and um, to see how it could be done most effectively, how to use the time here, which is very short, the most effective way. And I found that, for example, um, giving somebody an experience of oneness or healing them wasn't doing much good for uh, at an overall collective level because the person, although they would benefit at some level of that experience, most of the time the person would leave and then they would get something else. Too much momentum the other way in yeah. their lives, right? Yeah. So I continued uh, working and I was putting out books and information and I would meet also, I would work with uh, light workers who had a large audience and I would help them to become uh, more effective. So that was working really well. So instead of having 10,000 people in their lists or whatever, or, or coming to see them, they would have 100,000, you know. It's, it would, but it would always be in the background. And um, it was only last January that I was asked to go public. And I wondered at the time, I thought, what's the point? I mean, all the information's there, you know, anybody can find it. And it was a very, very strong call, you know. Um, it's a request, it's never an order, never an order. And um, I looked at it and I thought, well, I don't know how to do that, you know. When you say request, goes. explain to people how you right. get requested so they get a feel for that and go on. Yeah, the guidance or the request that I get, I call them from source, um, it becomes, I can see them coming in through different levels. Some of them come through directly in from the human collective. And I think that even my manifestation as a being here on the planet came directly from the collective when I look at it it felt like the collective, the human collective, the planetary collective and the planetary system collective put a call out to have the vibration of existence raised so people and beings and planets could have a different experience. They had enough or they had already gone through enough of the other experience and they wanted a different one. Higher level vibration will create a more empowered experience of life it will create a reality that's less solid, more pliable, so you can manifest whatever you need. Um, and it's also less divisive, so there's less of a division between beings. Uh, there's more empathic communication, there's more telepathic communication. And there's also the ability to join with others and create things together, right? And um, so that's the call that um, I could acknowledge or can remem remember, you know. And so that was, uh, when I say it comes from source, it means a multiple kind of layered thing that uh, the request really does come from the planet and the collective, but it comes through um, the divine consciousness, you know, it comes in. And how do I separate that from, me, from my own ego, for example, or from other entities that try to pretend to be source? Um, it's very simple. It's all you have to do is teach yourself to read in your own body the energy that what comes. What feels through. right. Exactly. Right. So you do a little test. You know, you say my name is George, and that doesn't feel right, and it will trigger things in your body when it's an untruth. And then you say your own name. My name is such and such, and it feels right. You know, and that's one of a little example. And it just takes practice and eventually you know when something comes from your ego, when something comes from source or something, somebody else, or it's influenced actually from other people even. So, um, yeah, so that, that's basically where the information comes from. And when I received the information from the piece, it's similar to when I write a book, for example, or write an article, it comes in through a channel of information that I, I call the collective consciousness as well as the, the divine consciousness, right? And um, it will come through and then I would have to translate it <laughs> into human language, into, um, in this case, acrylic on canvas, right? Um, so that, that, that moment of translation, I have to be very careful not to add stuff that's mine onto it. So I have yeah, to... Yeah, preferences and right. ways of being. Yes, a exactly. Bit. Yeah, yeah. Right. Or my own history, whatever, you know, that I might still be carrying as a, from this incarnation. So uh, you have to really t step out of the way, basically. <laughs> you stay right and out of the way. And it's knowing that internal, the internal knows. Yes, exactly. So there's a knowing, sense of knowing.
Yes. And so a year ago in January or just this January? Last uh, oh, 2010. 2010. Mm. So almost two years. Oh, that's right. No, what, what, <laughs> yes. what year are we? <laughs> oh, shit, I can't right. remember either. <laughs> 2010, so it's uh, 2011. It's December 2011, so it's like that's right. almost two years now. Yeah. So that message came through, filtered down, and the message was you've been behind the scenes, you've mm -hmm. been doing wonderful things, congratulations, get out there. <laughs> right. In essence, right? Yeah. Yeah, why don't you talk about that and how you, you know, how it translated through you and how you felt about it and, right. you know, what your first steps were to like, okay, you know, how do I do this? Yeah, and, exactly, that was the first step. <laughs> how do I do this, you know? Right. And um, so I Googled it, you know, to like do the search engine. But you've Absolutely. been with, you know, other people who reached yes, out. Exactly. So you had some experience. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I had I had what they what they were doing, I had their models. And I also went to San Diego to a large um, event where they had lots of speakers and authors. It was a publishing house. I did there was a huge event, thousands of people. Yeah, Hay House, right? Hay House, right. yes, yeah, Hay right. House Publishing. Yeah, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Lu Louise Hay, yeah, Louise she's Hay. amazing. Right? That's yeah, right. right, yeah. yeah. And I went to th her event, and I went from speaker to speaker, listening to them and watching them, all really amazing people, and all really, really different. And then I saw, oh my God, I can see that uh, the dots went together for me. They're just being themselves, you know? That's all you have to do, just be, be yourself. Yeah, be authentic. That's all you have to do. And I still didn't understand why I why, why was it necessary? Yeah, there were so many others. Why do you need to do it? Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah. Exactly. Why I me? Mean, why couldn't somebody else do it? <laughs> right. I'm happy in Sacramento. Exactly. Right yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm happy to hide the seeds. Exactly. Right. I'm very right. comfortable in my little corner. You know. <laughs> I like to observe right. and you know, and um, and I asked and um, the message that I received was the information is important. The tools are important. However, it's a lot easier for a person, for an individual, to access those tools and information if another human being, another individual, is expressing them it's vibrating as themselves. It. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. There's a field of yeah, voice. Yeah, the ideas just I, can't cut it anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, when I understood that, then I thought, oh, yeah, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> and um, I started, you know, putting out just a, in. It's been very organic growth process because I haven't actually tried to become public. I just made the decision that of that you were accepting, available. Yes, right. that I was accepting that new role, and um, I put up a website with all the information. It was different to how it was before. I made myself available with a contact form and a photograph. Right, before it was like <laughs> the contact that you had to go through 100 pages, you still weird. How do I reach you? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, and it's been, you know, taking off and it's been good. It's been really good. Yeah. And so, would you say one of the most important things at this time, I mean, there are you know, a zillion ways we could define it, but to, is to come into a recognition internally, each of us individually, of yeah. that vibration that's harmonious for you, that's right for you, that is in, in alignment with however you would look at higher spirit, spirit forces, light, God. Right, exactly. It's, it's exactly that. It's stopping to, you stop looking outside yourself into other people, you stop looking outside into deities and you start looking inside, right? The next dimensions, when people talk about the fourth, fifth or hundredth dimension, they're not out there actually, they're right inside, you know, that's how you access them. So you want a savior, you look in the mirror, you know, you're looking for, waiting for that angel to save you, you look in the mirror, that healer, look in the mirror. Obviously there's people out there who facilitate things, right? Right, at this point. Right, right. yeah. There's it can tears. be a mirror, in a, a clear mirror. Exactly in a as way. well, yeah. Um, th but that's just to make it easier for each individual to take full responsibility for their own vibration, their own life. And each, each person, as each person raises their own personal vibration, that's what does it. And that's really the key, what I found out through all those years and all that study was that I didn't actually have to do anything, you know? Right, yeah, get out of the way, and it's I've, there, exactly. right. Exactly. Yeah, it's like yeah. peeling the onion. Right, yeah. yeah. exactly, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And so, now that you're out there, and 
if you could say to people, you know, like, to come into that knowing that experience, these are possible tools or possible ways. Why don't you talk a little bit about that, and then we'll get more into it in the second section. Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing and the most important tool that I have discovered is basically to process one's fear. One's fear and also the body's fears. Um, one, and that doesn't mean ignoring them, it doesn't mean pushing them away, it means actually sitting down with it, uh, allowing it to grow, allowing it to exist, allowing it to express and then just bathing it with love and light and embracing it, you know, and acknowledging that energy. Do we have to know? Do we have to like use reason to know where the fear is coming from? Oh, no. No, it's just the fear itself. Oh, absolutely. The it's energy an of the fear. Exactly. It's, it's an energy. It's all about vibration. And once you, you um, reintegrate that vibration packet that's the fear and dissolve it into love and oneness, uh, your entire level of vibration will raise because that was pulling you down. So to become light, you know. Yeah, we, as, we talk about ascending. We're actually yeah. just getting lighter and lighter exactly, and lighter. Exactly, right? in vibration. And yeah, we talk about it like taking weight out of a backpack. Yes, and exactly. You just, you know, yeah. <laughs> and you start, you know, yeah. lifting off. Yeah. So yeah, the fear, and then um, even that will deal with the ego because the ego is very fear-based and it will deal with a lot of stuff. So. That would be my number one advice to, to process okay, my Okay, so that, that we'll, you know, we'll start with that and then we'll do the second half of the video and we'll come back and talk more about okay. you know, ways of, of really coming into that internal knowing. Because really, I agree that's like the real, so that each step of the way you know, you can tell when you're in harmony. Yes. Because there's an internal gauge that feels right or doesn't feel right. And feeling right feels a lot better than not feeling right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that helps as well. So we were talking earlier about knowing and, and how to proceed and things like that. And you, you were talking about what you felt was, you know, embracing fear. And what, is, what, what process would a person do... Would, would it be first be to recognize the fear that I feel afraid of something? Right. And then, why don't you talk to that? Yes, uh, it could be you feel afraid of something. You could be having a bad dream or something's happening in the real world that's giving you fear. The first thing I always say is find out if it's your fear or it's the body's fear. So, for example, in my personal case, if a spider, I saw a spider on my face, I would go, ah, you know, <laughs> run away or score. Yeah. And that would be a body fear, um, because the being is not really afraid of spiders, <laughs> right? But the person could also be afraid of things. For example, a person could be very afraid, and the body also, of loss. Loss? Uh, yeah, uh, death, for example, losing somebody, or losing their job, or losing their home, or loss in general. And there's a lot of that fear on the planet right now, the, the fear of loss, the fear of change, the fear of what's happening, what's coming. And... Fear of what's coming because they think that they're going to lose what they have when the new thing comes, right? And the, so the first thing is to find out, is this my fear or is this my body's fear? And then what I do is basically I, I go into a moment of silence and I scan for it in my body. I scan for it in my body and in my energy field to see where is it, where, where are you? And then I'll find that it'll be here or here or here or it could be out in somewhere just outside my body. And I would just look at it. I would look at it and sit with it. Fear, you're welcome here. And I would allow it to be there. I would allow it to stay. And then I would ask it to grow and express. That energy will then either grow really big or sometimes it just dissolves right there and then because it's been looked at, it's been acknowledged. Light has been shown on the darkness. That's right. And if it grows and, and stays there, what i then do would be to infuse it with light and love and embrace it, just love it, you know? And it works very much, it works in extremely well with one's own energy patterns. You don't have to find out, it, it, this is really, it's not necessary to know what it's about, where it came from, what's the history in it. That's all irrelevant. All you have to do is with the energy packet, that's the fear that's in your field or in your physical body. Because in, in essence, any explanation you give is never enough anyhow, because yeah. we're dealing in the infinite. Right, yeah. So it's yeah. always got like three dots before and three dots after it in <laughs> a sense, right? So, yeah. and we were talking at the break about like, 
like there's one like little quirk on this planet that like drives the rest of the disharmony, the fear, the <laughs> insanity. It's like feeling separate from ourselves, from God, from oneness. And so how is it by embracing the fear, but what ways would you, you know, advise or help or guide people to reconnect, to, to heal that disconnection? Why don't you talk about that? Or? There's a couple of things. One, a very practical, everyday one, and there's one that I, re I always request for people to do meditation, to go into a formal, formal meditation at least 20 minutes a day. I know people say, ah, I can't meditate, whatever. But that's just an excuse. Do you want to do it? Or you don't, you know? Right. Where there's a will, there's a exactly. way. Mostly on Earth. Mostly. Right. Right. Yeah, right. So establish that because that will, after a few weeks, we'll start getting that silence, or maybe months, but it will, you will eventually start getting that silence that allows you to connect to Source directly. Because you are Source. It's all one. And the other thing to connect with other human beings is to, it's very simple, it's a little exercise, you sit somewhere, like a cafe or something like that, or a restaurant, and you look at each person individually, and you say to yourself, this is a person, and you, and you look at yourself, and you try and not judge that person, right? Because whenever we look at a person, we'll say, oh, she's got a, a expensive shoes, I don't like her, or, oh, look at him, you know, he doesn't... Um, whatever, wash or, or the opposite. Or, or the opposite. It's you always know, he's handsome, he's this, yeah. but we have some... It's an agenda. Right. It's like, uh, he's good enough, she's not good enough, uh, he's not good enough, she's good. And we do it with everybody, even kids, even little children and babies. We, we have like a personal agenda of acceptance or rejection towards that individual. And the exercise basically is to become aware of that step of judgment and separation of each individual with our agenda. And basically just look at them and just say, I allow you to exist in my space. I allow you to be here and I embrace you. And it's really hard sometimes because there'll be people who, you know, we might react like energetically, ooh, you know, way than some others that we want to be friends with them, you know. But that's all the personal agenda is just to accept them and to allow them to be, exist at that moment. And that really transforms our own connection with others um, and also, if you sit there long enough, or you go there enough days, the whole environment will transform. It's, it's magical. So those would be the two little tools that I would um, advise on to reconnect, to start breaking down that illusion of separation, which is really an illusion of being different entities or being singularities, as I call them. It's not really real. Yeah. But it, yeah, at this level, we're playing that game. We're playing the game of being separate in singularities and having interactions with each other. But I honestly don't think it's a natural state for the human species to be so separate from each other. When I look back into time space, I see a time where humans were able to communicate telepathically, were able to become empathic with each other. So nobody needed to say, I've hurt my leg the whole environment, the, everybody around them would immediately know that person hurt their leg and they would all join to heal that leg, you know. And that's a, that feels like the natural human, the natural human is one that connects. And another couple of things that are naturally to humans, to us as a species, is for example, um, low vibrational environments are very unnatural for us. That's why we have so many people who come back from wars, broken people. We have so much problems with soldiers coming back, men and women, who have to spend the rest of their lives on drugs and um, sometimes psychiatric hospitals and then end up homeless, you know, because it's not a natural environment yeah, for the It's horrific, human. right, exactly. to be that separate and that yeah, angry and yeah. that... And it's not natural for the human species. Right. It really is not natural for somebody to be in a bad environment like that. And um, the other... Um, the almost, we're talking at the break, the almost mm -hmm. a miracle is that we've gotten to the point where we put ourselves and yes. each other in those kind of situations over and over again. Yeah. And there's something so inherently crazy, idiotic, horrible, disharmonious about it. Right. But if we look at it at a vibrational level, a species level, that's not... Where we're moving into is, is not going to happen anymore. It's, it's not compatible <laughs> right. as we raise the level of vibration of the planet. 
that's no longer compatible, that separation and that sense of I'm completely just alone and by myself and everything else is out there. Or the we and the they, that whole... Exactly, us and them, that's not going to that's not going to work anymore. You know? And some people are afraid of that and they have to f process that fear. Will I dissolve into the collective and not have my singularity again? No, you won't. You still have your own consciousness, your own awareness as a singular person, but you'll also be joined. And human contact, human conversation, human gaze to another human is really, really important. And if it wasn't natural for us to be connected that way, it wouldn't be that important. We find people who are isolated in an island, for example, they go nuts, you know, they, they go crazy, they can't survive. <laughs> <laughs> we live in amazing times, for sure. Yeah. So, and you're seeing that, you know, now that you're out there and you're more public, that that, that, that message, that vibration, that gift, that energy uh, is, is really desired you know, throughout society, throughout countries. I mean, it's just really having that impact. And, you know, more and more people want to experience that. Yeah, absolutely, yes. I find that people really resonate. And I always say, the proof is in the pudding. Try it, you know? Yeah, it feels a lot better, like we said. Exactly, try it. Do it yourself and see how you get on with it. You don't have to take my word for it, right? Do it yourself and see. This is really work, does it work for me or it doesn't? And the person has to be their own authority. They have to decide because that's the whole point, isn't it? Each person taking full responsibility and search and look and see what resonates and what doesn't. And be authentic, like you said, be authentic. And trust in that. Yes. You know, you know we've talked a lot earlier in different shows about you lean on the rubber cane. And that's what we do a lot in this society, but yeah. then you get a cane that you really can lean on. And that internal knowing becomes stronger and stronger the more you lean on it and really yes. harmonizes and brings joy to your life. That's right, yeah. And as soon as you start listening to that, then you get all the synchronistic events and, you know, the environment reflects that. Yeah, I, I actually heard an interview where you dis described and, you know, you. Uh, you know, expanded on that. Why don't you talk about that? Because I think that's really interesting to people. You know, that once you have that internal knowing, that everything kind of, you know, the birds talk to you about it, you know, in a certain way, and you yeah. open a book and your child says something. That's right, yes. Yeah, it's really fascinating. Once we start listening to our own internal compass, um, the environment that's supposedly solid and separate starts reflecting the same messages back to us. And sometimes uh, I've heard the question, you know, how do I know how far advanced I am in my ascension? How do I know if I've made it, you know, whatever. Well, once you stop asking those questions, it's a start, <laughs> right. but that, that's a whole other thing. The fact that they're asking is a good sign. Right? At some point. Yeah. It depends how long you ask it. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you so wear the, the cast on your arm after it's healed, you, that's may, true. you yeah. maybe you'd be better off getting rid of it. <laughs> it is heavy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. But was... the one, a really good way is how much are you listening to your own authority, your own knowing, and also h how much synchronistic events that you have, are happening around you, how much are you um, bringing into your life that's really supportive of your mission of your life itself. And then you'll know. And there's really n no way around it, really. It's once you start taking that on and raising, becoming responsible, raising your own vibration, it just resonates all around you and the environment will give you those messages, those magical little signs and things that are completely kind of impossible happen and, you know, it's really awesome. Yeah, there are more, more and more miracles in every step yes. of the way, whatever, you know, I mean, the whole thing is a miracle. <laughs> right. But you start to recognize it in, in little and big ways. Yes, yeah. And it can be really simple things, you know, like a, a little object in the right place, yeah. I like you mentioned my son, of my a child bringing you something. I had one of those. You know, my little boy brought me a feather, one a white feather. And I was I was looking after a red. Um, uh, I can't remember his name now. This um, Brazilian author, uh, Paulo Coelho, his book, and he talked about that he decided he was going to make a sign that if he received a white feather at a certain time space, he was going to write the book. And sure enough, he went to that time, the space, and the white feather <laughs> dropped in front of him, you know. 
So I thought, oh, that's a really good sign. I'd like to use that one. And um, so I went out and I was look, working on a book and my little boy was a toddler. He was toddling along and, um, and I was really tired and I thought, I really can't do it. Like, look after my toddler and home and write, write this book. And, and so I wasn't sure and thought, I'd really like to know if I'm really meant to do it right now. If I find the white feather, then that's it. And then he runs off, my little boy runs off towards a tree and I was in a park and I was watching him and then he comes back, he was delighted, you know, he was so happy. And he comes back with this really dirty, crumbly white feather, wow. you know, and wow. so he goes like this. And I go, whoa, that's oh amazing. God, really? Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. And he saw that I was so happy with the feather, that since, and he's five years old now, he still brings me feathers every oh, time. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, it's interesting how we're like that. Yes. You know, because yeah, we get habitual. Almost, okay. It's interesting because here's somebody three, four years old and gets habitual almost immediately. Right. I mean, the human yeah. species is amazing that yeah. way. As far uh, as he's concerned. Yeah, that's what brings you joy. Yes. And, yeah, it brings you, yeah, because making you happy makes him happy. That's right, yeah. yeah. But it's interesting how, you know, it's like we go to the beach if we have a good experience of the ocean. Yes. You know, we try, or, or the guru, or, you know, something, you know. Yeah. And it's just... It's tricky not getting a, a, you know, habitual and really being born again every moment. That's you know? right. Yeah. And that's really what we want, to be that you know, free and spontaneous. You know? And spontaneous. And deciding our own language. Because a lot of people ask me, well, what does this white feather mean? I received the white feather and I don't know what it means. So it's, it's not about the white feather. Right. It's not about <laughs> the, 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 you know, the green outfit or the no. white. Right. It's about you deciding yeah. how you converse with your higher self or with the environment. You decide. You can decide one day, okay, I'm going to see a, a gem, a yellow gem today. And if I see the ge yellow gem today or next week at 2 o'clock on Tuesday, then, and you see it, then that's really Yeah, a lot strong. of people do license plates or clouds. Or yes, exactly. You Numbers. Know? Yeah, however 11. you talk to your environment, <laughs> that means something. To yeah. You. Yeah. So for like with a minute, like if you could tell the world something that, you know, you're here and this is what I was brought here to, to vibrate, to express, to tell you. If you could do it in words in a minute, go. It's the most important thing that we have to learn as a species is how powerful, amazing and divine we are. Each individual person is an extremely powerful divine being and there's a lot of forces out there that don't want you to know that. So... No, that no. Is beautiful. Yeah, that is very beautiful. Yeah, and I, we were saying earlier, you know, whatever you think you are, you're more because you're this infinite, included, Absolutely. amazing being. Mm -hmm. So, you know, really, I mean, this has been a tremendous experience to, you know, have you here in the painting and all that. And so if you want any information about Anelia, about the art project, really understand that the art project is for everybody. And the art project is as a healing, as a service, as an acupuncture, as an expression of collaboration, creativity, and love. And, you know, you saw Anelia's piece, you saw Gerben's piece, and, you know, we're here to, to, to feel love and share it and serve together now. So if you need any information, it's Alan, 805-687-2053, 805-687-2053. And if you want to watch any of the shows, I mean, you saw this incredible show with Amelia but there are 280 other shows. YouTube put in Bridging Heaven and Earth and they just come up and come up and come up and we've done so many shows with so many beautiful teachers and healers and psychics and so good night, thank you, God bless you, thank you.